One such obstacle was the infamous poll tax, which was an instrument of voter suppression, particularly for those who were less well off financially. The poll tax was to be paid by February 1st of the year in which an election took place. The 19th Amendment was not ratified until August, meaning women didn't have the right to pay the poll tax in February, but having not paid the poll tax in February, didn't have the right to vote in November. We see the impact of uh, turning Hortense Ward here again, in this case, as she's the one that filed the case on behalf of Mrs. Mary F. Hinckley before Judge John D. Harvey. Ms. Ward argued that since the right to vote was unqualified in the U.S. Constitution, no one could be denied the right to vote simply because they did not pay the poll tax, even when they had not been allowed to pay the poll tax. The case was filed just a few days before the November 2nd election, and the judge found that the section of the Texas Constitution that established the poll tax was in violation of the 19th Amendment, and therefore women could vote for free. Mm -hmm. That year, 14,000 women in Harris and Walla counties were able to vote. 6,000 of them were African Americans. These two counties were the only counties in the state of Texas that voted that year. I am proud to say this fascinating and historically significant case has been fully preserved for future generations due to the generous contribution of Ms. Ray Bryant. A member of the Houston Suffragist Project, Ms. Bryant, would you please come forward? All right, Ray. Thank you. Stay with me for a minute. Okay. We recently celebrated the 101st anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment with Ms. Bryant, the Houston Suffragist Project, and the Houston Heritage Society. The picture on this slide is Ms. Bryant and Ms and a descendant of Pauline Garza Patton, one of the women who voted in 1920, and myself. If you haven't seen that exhibit at the Houston and the Heritage Society, I encourage you to visit and hear the full story of the fight that led to the passage of the 19th Amendment. I'm honored to present Ms. Bryant with this keepsake donor's copy in memory of, in recognition of her contribution and in memory of Hortense Ford and Pauline Garza Patton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Houston Suffragist Project has been doing a series of activities during this past year, and if you haven't signed the banner at the back, um, all of the artifacts we are creating are going to go into the women's collection at the University of Houston. So um, there are very few artifacts that survived. Linda. Had, um, offered her great grandmother's gavel and uh, loving, loving cup, um, but we're trying to create for the future. So please sign. We also have some photos of the women who brought the lawsuit. Um, there were two days, uh, the second hearing, the day before the election, and these are women who submitted petitions to Judge Harvey, and these are some of their photos. And if you, I don't have the bios here for the women but you can recognize some of their names and how they went on to influence Houston and shape Houston through into the 20th century. Um, so this, this whole project has been a great gift to all of us and we want to um, open up the whole notion of this special space that the uh, suffragists here in Houston and in the South, the former Confederacy, that's another unique situation, did there were very powerful women that uh, wanted to vote. To give you an example, in Georgia, only one white woman voted on that same day in the entire state. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Go the here, thing Sam. is that Pauline Patton's great niece is Barbara Georgia. Oh. Yeah, so the story continues, and Pauline was born in 1872 in San Antonio. Uh, her father was from Mexico. So she is a person who has a deep heritage. She represents white Houston and Texas is today. So we are we are widening the lens on the suffragists. Thank you. So All much. right.